If you want more content from We Studios, check us out at wepodcast.com. That's W-E-E podcast.com, where you can find our Simpsons podcast, worst episode ever, our commentary series, Sync Points, other 90s percentile episodes, our YouTube, our newsletter. Everything we do is there, and if you want to support everything we do, all you got to do is go to patreon.com slash we studios to contribute to our Patreon, or go to amazon.wepodcast.com, which will take you right to Amazon, and anything you shop will help support the show. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. Sixty minutes are on the clock, and straight out of Wii Studios, this is '90s Percentile. My name is Dan. My name is Jack, and we're talking everything '90s, and maybe also. Alrighty, and joining us in studio today, ready to talk '90s B and A with us, previous guest of the show, Styler. Uh, Styler. He's a Styler. <laughs> Styler. He's a Styler. He's he's just full of style. He's wearing he's got a style. very stylish. He's got flair. Plain and black he's right shirt there. and jeans. Mm-hmm. But, just the king of style, Steel Philippe. Steel Philippe Philippe is here. How you doing, Steel? Not bad. How are you two gentlemen doing I'm this I'm very good. Dan is uh, having some kind I'm of stroke. A stroke. But, <laughs> yes. but other than that, we are good. Um, Steel, you've been on the show before. If people want to listen to that, you were with uh, Adam Lance Garcia, and it That's was a correct. great episode uh, way back in our 40s. Go check that out. We talked about transmedia storytelling, which uh, actually has something to do with uh, a lot of your work. Yes, indeed. I am a uh, transmedia producer for Starlight Runner. I am the executive editor there. Uh, I've worked on such projects. Properties as uh, Pirates of the Caribbean and Halo. I've also worked for Pepperidge Farm and Reebok, and also done a lot of socio political stuff to help people expand their brand into the social media space so in a you, thoughtful if, and ethical you know, way. Did you come up way. with hashtag MAGA? Oh yeah, absolutely. Nice. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so also, I'm really Aga! curious to read your your socio political expanded universe Pepperidge Farm <laughs> fan fiction. You know, it, it, it's very much like that kind of fan fiction. I try to put as much, you know, fascism and anti-fascism into that as possible. Have like the fish, you know, argue about politics. Yeah. Very Camus inspired, you know. The and, rainbow goldfish, they mm-hmm. were segregated from yeah. the regular goldfish. Yeah, I just want to make sure that if uh, if Paul Verhoeven uh, directs an adaptation of your, uh, your goldfish movie, that he realizes the satire and doesn't just make it a straight up pro-fascist. Uh, <laughs> I this is great stuff. I want to talk about Paul Verhoeven and socialism and fascism and all that fun stuff. But Steele brought us a gift. Oh uh, yeah, and so I'm dying have, to try. We it. haven't had a guest. We've had a lot of brave guests. Uh, Some not, gu- guests uh, not like to bring us at, things. Yeah, they've been the guests have been doing random topics, and we've been very happy about that. Yes, but they haven't been bringing us food, and that's really why we started that's the why podcast. we started this podcast in the first place. Um, but Steele, you. Home have brought it to a next beer. level. Yes, yeah. indeed. And you have brought us, what have you brought us? This is a Belgian wheat beer. It's a very standard recipe, but I think you gentlemen will enjoy it. It's going to have okay. notes and of you, banana you and cloves. And you brewed this at home. Yes. You made this yourself. I made this myself with my own two hands. I, couldn't, right. ma- I couldn't make water. If you asked me, <laughs> if you gave me the hydrogen and the oxygen, I couldn't even do that. <laughs> if you drink enough of this, you'll be able to make some water. <laughs> All right, boys. Cheers. 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 Prost. That's delicious. Ooh. Ooh. I'm glad you like it. I, Very I, refreshing. Um, some kind of like uh, t- tones of apple. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, yeah. That's my fault. It warmed a little too much, but the fruity <laughs> esters are supposed to be there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Delicious. It's very good. A very good summer beer. Yeah. It's, it's, like it's it. also low in alcohol. It's about 4%. Oh, you know, wow. so. Why am I drinking it then? Boo. It's, it's a session beer. I want to get shit faced. <laughs> I wanted to have a session where I was throwing up violently in the bathroom in two hours. <laughs> my next beer will be a triple, so that's going to be more right. like 9.5%. This That'll is, balance this out is then. awesome. Um, and still, you do so much. You do, like you said, you do all this writing. And you, you brew your own beer. Um, you're, you're, in a, you're in a couple of writers groups with me, and you're in other stuff. You're, you're sports buff. Uh, you do podcasting. You also have a radio room with Adam Garcia. That is correct. Uh, where it's, it's literally like you're doing audio plays that you can download just like you would download a podcast. Uh, you produce them. You also have one that you write called uh, Queens of the Sapphire Sea. That is correct. Uh, which is a, 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 um, a dog fighting, like airplane battle. Like, uh, it's just there's An so air, much. A dog fighting you, radio drama. How do you fit all of this awesomeness into your into your day? Well, but for a compliment like that, I have to think for a few seconds. <laughs> well, I drink your whole... Again, you made this beer. <laughs> you know, it's just about, you know, finding time to, you know, do what you love. I, for so long, I just, like, sat on my couch and did nothing. Like, I'd, I'd work, like, a terrible nine-to-five job and try and find ways to write. And it just, at, at a certain point, I'm like, I'm just rewatching the same episodes of Smallville, even though I hate this episode of Smallville. <laughs> so, you know, why don't I just actually do something? Instead of reading someone else's writing that I hate, how about I get out there and actually 
do some stuff. There you so, go. You know, so you just yeah. described like my life <laughs> now. You just described me right now. You know, it's... Except to replace Smallville with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yeah, we were talking just before we started recording about how you were re-watching Power Rangers. And, literally not, and I, I said, I don't know if that's the best use of your time. <laughs> but it's what I'm doing. But you're, what you're, a doing. you're a talented writer. You've written stuff that I've really enjoyed. And, you're, you. and you are in a writer's group so that you're pushing, you know. I'm trying. We, I'm have, trying. To get, we have to get back on that. I'm about halfway through my project for that kind of thing. And it's looking pretty well. So good. We'll good. Yeah. All right. Um, well, so... We are here, guys, not to talk about your projects, nope. although a little bit with Steel, because he's our guest, and, you know, <laughs> he's telling us all about it, the styles I'm, I'm and enjoy, beers. I'm enjoying his projects right now down my throat. <laughs> I am as well, but that's not our topic today. Our topic is the 90s, and 90s... Just this once. Life. <laughs> Just this once. We're going to talk about the 90s. I love the 90s, but in a way that's legally distinct from VH1. Absolutely good. <laughs> very good. Very Yes, very legally distinct, in fact. Uh, Steele, you are a returning guest. You know how this show works. But if you are a listener who is coming in for the first time, we have a bank of topics. We call it the Random Topic Generator. We're listeners of this show. Go to WePodcast.com or 90sPercentile.com to submit topics, 90s in nature, and we will pick them out randomly. Unless, Steel, you have a topic that you want to go right into. What do you want to do? Do you want to do a random topic? Bob, I want to go for the random topic generator. All right. right. Steel's going random on us, so we're going to go into old Jenny and see what she's got. Jenny, we got your number. All right, Jenny, she has come out with, this one comes from listener Reinhold Boomer. Thank so you. So thank you, Reinhold. Both of those names, awesome. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of two names, his topic is two names. It is Roseanne and Tom Arnold. Oh. That's three, three names. But. I, technically, he's a firsty firsty, Tom Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, yeah. Benedict Arnold, yeah. also firsty firsty. <laughs> and, and Roseanne Arnold. And Roseanne <laughs> Arnold. <laughs> Ro- Roseanne, she's a firsty onesie. So, so just in case you don't know who these people are, um, because we do have uh, listeners who are youngsters, uh, a little young. You see True Lies, you know Tommy Arnold. The True Lies, actually, that's probably his greatest role. I love him. One hundred percent. It ain't the stupids. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) True True Lies probably came out before many of our listeners were born. So ninety four, ninety four, ninety four. Yeah. yeah. Um, So uh, we'll get into that, I'm sure. Uh, But who? So Roseanne, uh, if you don't remember, she had this. She was a stand up in the eighties, and she had a huge sitcom on ABC in the Huge. early 90s. Uh, which they are bringing back today. Yeah, uh, which Not could right be interesting. Today. It would launch John Goodman's career, yeah. uh, among yeah. other things. Yeah. Didn't Joss Whedon write for that, or is that J.J. Uh, Abrams? Uh, uh, one, one of those guys. I think that Joss Whedon did write for Roseanne, okay. actually. Yeah. One of those two guys is influential in the development of that I thought career. maybe Joss Whedon was Golden Girls, but I think that's Mitch Hurwitz who uh, created Arrested Development. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Mitch Hurwitz mm. is Golden Girls. Um, so... Anyway, you, know, you, you probably know who she is, even if you're uh, on the young side. She talks like this, <laughs> uh, and, but not like this, because it's a terrible impression. And a few seasons into Roseanne, uh, uh, she had a actually celebrity marriage where, I, I don't know why, I'm, I'm too young, but at some point, uh, Tom Arnold became famous for being... Uh, his wife, his her husband, and there was kind of this well, uh, insinuation that basically he was just leeching off of her fame to launch his own career. Yes, I don't know. We should look up what Tom Arnold was doing before he was with Roseanne. I mean, at this point, we were probably seven, eight years old, so we were not following <laughs> Tom Arnold's career too, right. too closely. Um, but they were the the if Roseanne was already a loud uh, and um, uh, very brash, brash brassy. personality, uh, Tom, the two of them together yes. really doubled down. So there's actually yeah. a very famous. Outtake from Saturday Night Live, uh, and it was when Chris Farley had first started. Uh, he was probably even still a featured player. It was like 1989, 1990, 1991. Yeah. Dennis Miller was still doing Weekend Update. Yeah, and this man. outtake is he does a remote remote with uh, Victoria Jackson doing Roseanne. She would do it from time to time. Right. And Chris Farley was playing Tom Arnold, and his thing was he was very like Quentin Tarantino, where he uh, used his arms a lot and he's very expressive, and he get, got up and would get in front of the camera, uh, and he and it's Chris Farley. So Chris Farley's really playing it up, uh, and at some point point he falls back onto the couch and his ass comes like literally his pants on oh, yeah. and Dennis Miller just goes did I just see the new guy's asshole, asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that so and I, the reason that it's just a funny story but also that tells you these guys were culturally like they were uh, a hot topic yeah. the SNL would already be parodying them yeah. so yeah why don't we get some backstory now that we now that everybody is on the same page yeah so I'm looking up uh, the Wikipedia page for Tom Arnold the actor not Tom Arnold the economist mm-hmm. <laughs> there's a big difference they, they, you know people confuse them all the time I, they do absolutely uh, they're like were you in Austin Powers where, where he was taking a shit 
And it's, to the economist, they say that. And it's like, no, I'm from the Chicago School of Economics. <laughs> oh, we have him here in studio. Uh, <laughs> apparently, uh, he was a, a prop comic in the 80s, yep. Tom oh. Arnold. I didn't know that. He was, uh, he, he was, I mean, he wasn't huge, but he'd, he'd begun to get a, a lot of, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I've seen him in stand up. He's funny, you know. I, I like him a lot. I mean, I'll get back to his backstory, but I really like Tom Arnold, just in general. Like, in True Lies, he's fantastic. In, uh, what else is he in? Nine months. He's Hugh Grant's best friend. That's right. In nine he months. is in nine months. Yeah. His yeah. sense of humor, his style, whatever you're going to call it, I enjoy. Yes. Uh, so he was he was a comic, and Roseanne brought him into the show as a writer, and then they fell in love, got married. So oh, so it wasn't the other way around. Uh, it wasn't no, like hey, see, we're well, having sex. Hey, you want a job on my show? I mean, I guess Wikipedia might be leaving out the right, the right. sorted details, but at some point they met. But he wrote for the show, and they got oh, married. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, you know, it doesn't say and, and, when he entered her for the first time. Sh- oh, God. I, that, maybe I that's, look, on, that's on the Roseanne wiki. I, okay, I'll that's look on that the lunchbox.wiki. November thirteenth, nineteen eighty nine. There it was. Okay, good. I'm glad we got that out of the way. <laughs> it's funny that Tom Arnold, the economist, uh, the, the economist, actually knew that answer. He uh, did. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yes, I, I'm very familiar with this. <laughs> Um, so that was actually he was he specialized in the economics of Roseanne having sex. And <laughs> I'm not going to look this up yet, but I think that this was a thing that happened. Didn't they get tattoos of each other on their butts? Tom Arnold and Roseanne. I mean, getting, like getting tattoos of each other's names was a big thing in the '90s. I mean, it, it'd been before that, but you know, I like your like celebrities to do did. that. You yeah. know, Johnny Depp and Winona, and like all all these kind of things. Dan, when we hit episode 100 of 90s percentile. Should we just get tattoos of our names on, on each other? Absolutely, Jack. Should right we do, on the butt cheeks. Oh, I was going to say we do it on the ears, because that's where we put our headphones. Oh, yeah. So, something podcasty related. No, 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 because then you can't see it when you put the headphones on. What if I get on? a tattoo of your ear on my ear? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what if I ta- And you get likewise. What if I tattoo Dan on the shaft of my penis, but it's so that if I get erect, it actually spells out Daniel J. Mulhall? Okay, I'm... Go- yeah, yeah, no, no way. No way you're big enough. enough. No way. <laughs> I, I'd have room to spare still. Dan actually is... He's pushing it. <laughs> I can put his social security number, his address, his uh, his ma- mother's maiden name. <laughs> so okay, I figured it. Yeah, please do put my put maybe in, maybe in name. two point font. Sorry, continue. <laughs> I have uh, done some googling here, and Tom Arnold got a tattoo of Roseanne's face Ugh. to try to save their marriage. That's Whoa. what it was. That's what happened. And uh, I'm, I'm I have a picture of it here. At the fact that Roseanne, uh, uh, at the way she looks. But if, not you, great. if you tattoo anybody's face, it's always eventually it's not going to look very good. No, and it's not even a, a particularly good f- photo of Le- Roseanne's mm-hmm. face. Uh, and apparently, he told TMZ in 2012 that it was the worst mistake of his life. <laughs> I assume he's had it removed since, but maybe not because I have a recent well, picture I don't know. of him. If you have a, if you have a picture of Roseanne uh, and you want to cover it up, you know, like how uh, Johnny Depp had Winona forever, Wino, uh, yeah, and he changed it to Wino forever, yeah. So how do you what do you change Roseanne's face to uh, as a cover up? Uh, I think you tattoo? just I think you just got to get like a Death Star <laughs> or something like that. Like, <laughs> or I mean, the easy choice might be if it was a really bad divorce, just put like a no smoking sign over it, like yeah, a red that's star, true, yeah. like yeah. a Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters logo, logo, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, uh, that's a thing you could do. Um, Roseanne, did you guys watch the show Roseanne? I did when I was younger. You know, yeah, I haven't same. watched it in a while, but I remember liking it as a kid. Even as a kid, it was it was a lot more adult than the other things I was watching. Definitely. You know, and I, I don't think my parents realized like you know the kind of stories that they were telling. Like it wasn't like foul. It wasn't you know um, what what's it called? Married with children or something like right, that. Right. Right. It was definitely like I was watching. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And yeah, then, and then you'd switch over to Roseanne. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's yeah. funny you bring up the, the whole parent thing. So my wife was not allowed to watch The Simpsons when she was a kid, and she also wasn't ar- allowed to watch Roseanne. She grew up in an orphanage. She yeah. grew up she, in an orphanage she, that had no television. <laughs> no, and she, at some point in her life, found something that she had written when she was a kid, and she said, Roseanne is from the devil. <laughs> I don't know why. Was she just confused? Maybe she was watching Comedy Central uh, She-Devil? Like- <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. But my wife thinks Roseanne is from the devil. Not not still, but she did at okay. one point. Um, I, I'm sure the actual sitcom itself is a topic in Jenny, so we will get to it at some point. Yeah, um, I really want to rewatch it. But I don't think it's on Netflix or Hulu or anything. It's really well respected. Like particularly the second yeah. and third seasons are like people when when I talk to writers and they talk about like their influences, people of our generation, maybe yeah. a little bit older, they say you know Roseanne was not not necessarily ahead of its time, but it was you know I would, the, I it was would, a good no, show. I would yeah. say I would say it's one of the most important television sitcoms of the if we're not going by decades so maybe if you're going by late 80s early 90s i'd say culturally it was yeah. one, it was top 3 super important because you had married with children but married with children was more 
uh, crude and it was more it was funny. Very, I think it was a funnier show. Gag based. Roseanne show. was the closest we had to Norman Lear in the 1990s. Yeah, it was absolutely. The clo- That's it was, what I was thinking too. Yeah. It was basically like this is. It's really possibly the closest analog to The Simpsons, uh, where they. It's this is what real middle class America is like. This is yeah. you know this this is what life looks like when you're not. Uh, dramatizing on TV, or you're trying to make it leave it to Beaver. Or Father knows best. Yep. This is what like they had a blanket on their couch. This like homemade knitted yeah, afghan, an afghan yeah. that was on every couch of every home I knew growing up. Yeah. I, yeah. I I still have the afghan in my, in my closet. Yeah, I remember an episode where um, the daughter was really upset because uh, Roseanne was you know teaching a home ec, and they went out and she had like all these tips and tricks that I like everybody knew. Like she was like, all right, did everybody like you know rub off the expiration date on the coupons? <laughs> Great, yeah, right. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah. That's I think people yeah. are laughing. I'm like, it's no, no, ab- absolutely. That's what you do. Yeah, totally. There was a thing they did on that show. Uh, so like Seinfeld was famous because they did something realistic where Jerry would always go over to the buzzer and buzz up the the people. If you live in a city, or you live in an apartment building, you know that's just like a fact of life. You're always buzzing people mm-hmm. up. Roseanne did something that you would never think about it, but no other show was doing this. Where every time. Uh, Dan would come home from work or come in, he'd grab a bottle of beer from the fridge. Yeah. And it's just this this very... Like, they didn't draw attention to it, but it was something he did every time because... That's what people do. They go to the they, they go to the fridge right. and they it's take time it to out. relax. Yeah, particularly have, after have like a, a ten hour job, yeah. like you're, you're working the extra hours because you need the overtime. Yeah, you yeah, only yeah. have a certain amount of overtime uh, per year, or per week, or per month, whatever you know it's working out. And so after that ten hour, and if you're an hour in each direction commuting because you live a lower <laughs> middle class life and you live a long way away, yeah, you come back. You've been away from home for thirteen hours, you know, including that lunch break. Yeah, and it's like I need a beer. Absolutely, um, good show, and it is like we said, it's coming. Back, they're reviving Roseanne. They're reviving everything. They're reviving Louis. It's amazing. I feel bad for Coach. That's that was one of the <laughs> first shows that they were like, we're bringing it back. Yeah, before Twin Peaks, before Arrested Development, we're Coach bringing it back. Coach was an odd first choice, but it, but the, it was turned out they decided not to do it. I feel like now, once Roseanne comes out, Craig T. Nelson's like, what she got. I don't that got. I don't got. <laughs> well, I feel like a lot of people in the '90s did not like Roseanne as a person. Yeah. Well, she was an easy target. She um, was. You know, she was. And, she was yeah. a bigger woman. Yeah. She spoke her mind. Yep. And uh, she was very blue. And I think a lot of people didn't like that. Yeah. Because and it, a lot of people are assholes. It was also. I mean, this was a time when you know people did, people thought the Simpsons were the devil. Yes. You know, and we look at it now, and okay, some things a little risque, but it's fairly. Quaint, you I know. mean, The Simpsons, it was just like, you know, Bart would talk back to his parents right. and like, you can't do that. On television? In How prime dare time? You. I know. Now and, it and, is. and again, life was always like that. It wasn't like the, so suddenly we became modern in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. It's that TV always hid that. Yes. Uh, yeah. Leave it to Beaver. We, you watch those black and white 50s shows, I Love Lucy, they don't say the word pregnant. That's not what life actually looked like right. in the 50s and 60s. Right. Again, Sleeping in two separate beds. Right. That Norman, was just for TV. Norman Lear came very close, and that's why his sitcoms in the 70s, like, all in the family uh, were, were very critically appraised, but... Critically appraised, like if it was Sotheby's or something. It was the wrong word to use. Mm-hmm. I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna hit it, but I'm glad you did. No, so. I'm an asshole. <laughs> do it, do it. Really, just, just stretch it out. But, uh, but yeah, no, that's and then Roseanne, you know, so. Roseanne was very much in the same right. mold. It wasn't yes. like people started going and grabbing a beer out of the fridge in no, 1987. No. But yeah, they were the first to show it. And there, there's this like pushback where where the powers that be say, no, don't sh- that this isn't what TV is supposed to do. You don't show that. I mean, I don't even know. I mean, I think that's part of it. But also, I think media is intended to be a mirror. At least I'm speaking in the time that Roseanne premiered in like the late 80s, early 90s, where it should be showing us our best selves instead of being a, a kind of reflection of who we actually are. Yeah. So the the fact that Bart was an underachiever and proud of it, as the poster I had in my basement for many years said, <laughs> people didn't like that because it's like, no, we must teach our children to work well and, you know, to do stuff. I mean, not to be subversive uh, college freshman over here, yeah. but I would argue that there is some kind of um, fear by the powers that be, you know, those in the ruling class. You don't want the underclass to all suddenly realize they're all in this together yeah. because that's what actually sparked, hey, maybe maybe life is unfair. Now, after 30 yeah. years of actually getting away with I this and right. the internet and everything, we've realized that we could uh, all agree all, as much as we want. There's still nothing we can do. We're fucked. But uh, maybe they don't want people seeing uh, Roseanne and seeing All in the Family because if everybody realized, hey, you know, we all have it tough. Maybe we should do something about it. Yeah. You know what? But this was, I mean, this is coming from Fox, which at that point was, you know, what we consider the right. ABC, 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 actually. Was it ABC? ABC? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. You're right. The Never American mind. Broadcasting Company. I, so we were talking. We were talking about. Uh, we, we were talking Married with Children Married and with the Simpsons. Simpsons. Yeah. And, but 
you know, like that, this was the point where cable was hitting really big, yep. and uh, times were changing with in terms of sports. You know, sports viewership was up, sports attendance was up. All these networks were like, we can't just keep showing the same thing over and over again. We have yeah. to do something different. Yep. And it was also, you know, with that with that multi camera sitcom, you were able to do you know you were able to do it on a much cheaper scale than you would with a single camera as later on. Although you would see that experimentation, obviously Malcolm Little was like the first big one. Yeah. But you know, now that's the standard. I mean how many how many multi camera sitcoms are left? Big Bang, Two Broke Girls just uh, they get were, canceled. It, I feel like it was coming back a little bit, like Mom on CBS. Yeah. So, like CBS tends to do a lot of uh, multicam sitcoms. Yeah, cheap, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, or at least it allows you to have stars on, you know, and frame it around them so you can spend more on right. the talent. Although even than... NBC has done it. I haven't seen it, but I hear the Carmichael show is good, and I'm pretty I'm sure that's a multicam I've heard that was good, uh, yeah. show. And they tried to do it with Up, Up All Night, the Christina Applegate show. Yes. Where they, yeah. it was single cam, and then they turned it into a multicam show, like mm-hmm. halfway through the series. I See, Run. I I think multicam can be really good. I mean, God, Seinfeld's multicam, and I think it's the actually one, one day at a time on Netflix is shows. multicam, and um, uh, that's a, that's a good show. There's, it, yeah, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. Continue. It's just it's just very it, it's less realistic. It's less naturalistic mm-hmm. because there is a phony form to it. Yeah, um, but it's got to be so much fun because it's the closest we have to watching. Live uh, plays, live, right, exactly. live theater. It's uh, descended from the the play roots. Like if I was an actor and I'm not, uh, I think I would have a ball doing a three camera sitcom. Maybe even more so compared to a one camera uh, show. You could feed yeah. off that energy, you know. Could yeah. really work. You know, I mean, I mean, the problem with the multicam is that it's you know all the tropes that have been yeah. you know, attached to it over the years. The like, ter- oh! Yeah, everybody you know. seems to have forgotten yeah. that you can do a Seinfeld. Everybody seems to yeah. only think you could, you have to do a Big Bang Theory. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what happens with Roseanne when it comes back. I'm kind of pretty. I'm pretty excited about it. I hope that the actual original run of Roseanne comes up on Netflix or a Hulu well, or somewhere because it's not anywhere right now, which is yeah. kind of weird. Yeah, you're right about. I, it. I, and it's I, especially I, weird because why are they bringing it back if it doesn't seem like you know things like Twin Peaks have been available for streaming for years, mm-hmm. um, Gilmore Girls, Arrested Development, all the ones the high profile ones they brought back people have been watching those it's odd that Roseanne I don't think has ever been available for streaming why bring Roseanne back? I think it was it's at prob- one point, maybe, but I can't. It's you probably know. the producers. They probably just they brought it to the studio. Oh, I'm, sure, like, hey, I'm, I'm sure Roseanne Paul, Paul herself, Junger Witt or whoever was doing it. Yeah, I mean, Roseanne we'll herself probably wants to do it. Think about all those sitcoms from that. I mean, w- yeah. the Cosby Show, you know, or well, even when are they bring the Cosby Show back? Not going to have a Roseanne right. Cosby right. Show going to be back. Probably yeah. not that one. <laughs> but uh, also, you know, but other shows like Jake and the Fat Man, you know, <laughs> like these kind of things. Where's my Jake and the Fat Man reboot? Hey. Hey, but that was that was actually a Seinfeld bit. He was like, you know, we'd get a little bigger in the ratings. We were right up against Jake and the Fat Man, yeah, and I right. just felt that you know he would just get a little bit fatter, you know, and <laughs> push us out. I love Jake and the Fat Man as a very little child, and uh, again for our <laughs> listeners who were born after True Lies came out, yeah. you do not know what we're talking about. I, I only I never watched it. I remember it being a show, um, but it's not a topic. It so. was a show, right? So a, yeah. it was a thing. I've got a very important question about the Roseanne okay. reboot. So you guys watch? You remember the show from the original run? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. All right. So they had this very Iconic theme song, bow, uh, bow, bow. yeah, harmonica or something playing, yeah. uh, and it was everybody sitting around the dinner table having dinner. At one point, they're playing poker. Yeah. Um, one time, they're eating pizza. Another season, they're eating Chinese food. It was almost like the camera was on a lazy Susan yeah. and right. rotating yeah, right. around and, and they were eating everyone. dinner. Yeah. Uh, they were around the dinner table. Yep. This so the, for the reboot for Roseanne 2018. Yeah. What dinner product? What food are they going to be eating? Shawarma. Ooh. <laughs> it's just going to be the last scene of the, the Avengers. Avengers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there's just Iron Man is there. <laughs> Delightful. Well, Robert Downey Jr. was probably, I don't think, and guested in any episodes, but George Clooney got to start there. Mm-hmm. That's true. Got he to, did. He was in the first couple seasons. Yeah. Sarah Chalk, uh, before uh, she replaced so, uh, Becky. So this is, I believe I read this. This, this. I might be wrong here, but I believe that Sarah Chalk is returning for the Roseanne reboot as a different character because what? the original They're Becky is original coming Becky back. back. Oh, yeah. right. well, so she's coming yeah. in as like somebody else. Right, because in the original run, um, Sarah Chalk replaced Becky for the three seasons, right. but then the original actress came back. Yes. Uh, so it would be unfair to just give it back to Sarah Chalk again. I that works for me. love Sarah Chalk. I th- just want to throw that mm-hmm. out there. She's fucking terrific. Um, yeah, she's okay. She's amazing. I, she's, I love she's her. She's great on... Uh, she's no Tom Marshall. She's great on Scrubs. On she's great on Rick and Morty. Morty. Yeah. She was great on that show that no one watched. 
that she was in. Oh yeah, which that I show. never watched. Mm-hmm. It was a show. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know if Mark is going to come back. I liked Mark, but uh, from what I understood from Roseanne's pitch, I don't know how much the show is going to meet her pitch. Yeah. But uh, supposedly he would have died in Iraq or Afghanistan. Okay. Um, Johnny uh, Galecki from Big I, Bang I was Theory. Say, I don't think Johnny Galecki is going to return. I wouldn't be surprised if he comes in for an episode or two. Full House situation. I'd be surprised. I don't think CBS is going to allow that. And Johnny Galecki is a millionaire well, many not, times over at this point. It's not 1950s studio system. They don't have a say in what he can do. <laughs> uh, you mean 100 bucks and I have to work for free for the rest of my life? Sign me up. That's not necessarily true. Um, I believe he's divorced and actually, um, what's it, Darlene, the daughter, yeah. might actually be a lesbian now in, in, in Roseanne's okay. pitch. Sure, yeah. Um, so he might be out of the picture. But I could see him coming for an episode or two. Uh, it's launched a few careers. Um uh, obviously, John Goodman's the biggest. I mean, I feel yeah, like John geez. Goodman. Um, man, I fucking love John Goodman. What's I'm sure love? that we all do. Um, yeah. The sister, Roseanne's sister, um, uh, Lori Metcalf. Yeah, she's doing amazing. She's a yeah, right terrific now. theater actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, a Tony winner, I think. Tony nominee for certain. She was uh, nominated. Oh. I'm not sure if she won. I okay. can't remember. I saw. I got to see her live for, uh, with Bruce Willis for the Misery adaptation. And, I, I wanted uh, to see that. How was, was it? It was okay. She was incredible. Yeah. Uh, it was just cool to see Bruce Willis in person. I, I bump into him in the street every once in a while, so <laughs> I have seen him in person. It was way to name drop. Yeah, yeah really. I, I saw. I saw. Yeah, Bruce him and I, you know, we hang out all the time. The 13th was... step on Second Avenue. You know, go there, <laughs> mention my name. But watching him, he's he's, he's not an over emotive actor these days. I would so. love to run into Bruce Willis and just be like Chester A. Arthur. The 23rd president, Chester Ray Arthur. It was not the 23rd. What was he, 22nd, 21st? 21 of 42. 21. 21 21 of 42. 42. I just watched it not that long ago, too, Um, Die Hard with a Vengeance. uh, Actually, I had to pee so bad, and I was waiting for the intermission, and it got to the point where I'm familiar with the, the story of misery. So I got, I was like, I don't think this. I think this might be a one act play. Oh, and no. I was like, oh, and, oh, I had, oh. and I had a piece. It, like I was in physical agony. I feel and like I was plays, waiting. Yeah. And I was waiting for the intermission. Finally, I was just like, I, I gotta go. I gotta go. And I get up and I go and I go pee. And I'm like in the basement, like urinal, and I'm yeah. peeing. And I just hear the audience go crazy. And I'm just oh. like, oh. And I come up. And it was over. <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I missed literally him like escaping and like killing Annie Wilkes and. and Oh, man. Breaking out. And, spoilers for Misery. Yeah. yeah. I, I, <laughs> spoilers for the Broadway production that is close. Yeah, there's a statute of limitations on yeah. that. I know, I know. Yeah, I missed the whole fucking thing. I couldn't wait two more minutes. Um, <laughs> I yeah. would have peed myself, though. Do we have anything else we want to say specifically about, about Roseanne, Roseanne and, and Tom, Tom Arnold? Arnold. So, uh, a good the, thing about, the tandem pair. A good thing about Tom is he does seem like, I, I mean, we don't know him in person. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, I did share a couple of uh, red lights with him at some point, uh, just, to, just, just to say. I don't know uh, what that means. Like I did with Bruce Willis. It was a call oh, back a to 30 seconds ago. I didn't yeah. hear that. Um, no, he seems like a genial guy. He was famous in the early 90s. There was, uh, for you know, in terms of like a, the pre-TMZ era. Uh, the People magazine. He was famous for his drug problem. Yeah, and he yeah, seems to have recovered, true. which a lot of actors don't. Uh, he seems to have a happy ending uh, when it comes to that. And he was in a film that was called Happy Endings. Apparently, it came out in two thousand five. About hand yep. jobs, it's probably about hand jobs. Was it about hand jobs? Let's look it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> Is it up there? Let's go to Was Happy Endings About Handjobs dot com. <laughs> Yep, it was about hand jobs. <laughs> the poster uh, is a butt with yeah. a towel over it that says "hand happy ending." Wow. But, yeah, but he seems to, especially because of Roseanne and everything, he seems to have a, a more cruder shtick of, yeah. of such. But he seems like a decent guy. He also he, he's able to make fun of himself. I yes. don't know how bad or good he is in real life. You know, I've worked in the industry long enough to have heard lies on both ways. Oh, he's the greatest person to work with, and I've never worked with that person ever again. Yeah. Or you know, the guy you know, such an asshole, and he's the most genial person I've ever met. Um, yeah. This was. This this is a story. Um, actually, no, I, I shouldn't tell that because uh, it deals with the project. But in any case, I met I met a, an actor a few times when I was young, and he was kind of a he was kind of a jerk to me. And okay, just because he, just he's an actor, whatever. Right, right, right. And then because actors are jerks. Well, you know. And then uh, we were doing a function together, and we were just kind of like sharing um, sharing a beer. Uh, while we were waiting for something to go Did you brew up. him the beer? I did not brew him the beer. <laughs> ah. um, but he, uh, you, you know, I, 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 more subtly than this, but it's kind of, you know, told him, like, you know, you were kind of a dick to me when I was a kid. <laughs> and, I'm glad you called him out, though. Well, you know, it's just kind of, you know, he was kind of, you know, making a comment about some people, some of the fans. And I'm like, I was one of those fans, and you were like that to me. And he's like, listen, kid, because at that point I was 23 or 24, and he's like, look, I do 200 of these things a year. He's, yeah. a, he's not a B-movie, I mean, he's kind of a B-movie actor, but he's very well respected in the community for some of the stuff he does, and he's like, you probably caught me on a bad day. Yeah. You know, if, if you were to judge me based on 
my worst day. How could I do the same thing to you? Like take the worst day of your life. That's a great yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you just happen to meet somebody, and that person goes online and says, right. "This guy, you know, steals such an asshole." You know, yeah. blah 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 blah. And it's just because you know my wife left me, and my dog died, and my father. You know, right? You know, yeah, exactly. It's the the fundamental attribution error in psychology, right. Where you you assume for other people, like, oh, that person's a dick. But if it happens to you, you're like, no, I was having a bad day. That's why I was upset. To this day, right. I still don't like Simon Pegg movies because the the one time I met him, he was such an ass asshole to me and i'm sure it was one of those situations yeah. but i still Probably. can't get over that guttural no I, like, I, I, I get it but you know i mean tom arnold went on the simpsons and mocked that's, himself that's what i was gonna bring up. you know yeah. and he got launched into the sun along with the rest he, of the assholes <laughs> of yeah, the world he played a he played himself as the <laughs> going into the sun being to get rid of for being an untalented actor yeah. right because we're getting rid of the worst people in the world and he was one of the worst people in the world mm-hmm. yeah I love Tom Arnold. I think he's great. I think he's hilarious. We were talking about True Lies. True, you know, uh, he's, he's so many true great lies lines. Is so good. In that. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, he ran for president in 2012. Did you know that? I did not know that because the he did green, not win. For the Green Tea Party. He didn't. The <laughs> he didn't Green Tea Party. Not for the Green Tea Party. Hashtag that, not my president. Um, <laughs> his candidacy mixed attention to economics, personal health, and meditation. Oh, I'm t- oh, this is Roseanne. Never mind. Oh. <laughs> I did know that, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I was on the wrong Arnold yeah. page. Rose Tom Arnold, you know. <laughs> how, how, could you, how could you make that like a double thing? Like, you got Benifer, you got... Yeah. Roseanne and Tom. Yeah. Tozan, Tom. Tozan is pretty Tozan? nice. Tozan, yeah. I feel like that was a, a time Toz, before Toz, celebrity couples. Tozan Barnold. Yeah. Tozan oh, Barnold. She was Roseanne yeah. Barnold yeah. at the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. You Toz- can even just go Barnold. You know, there <laughs> Bar- you go. Barnold. Yeah. I like Barnold. What up, Barnold? <laughs> <laughs> Um, that is definitely like someone, like some bar's mascot. Yeah. He's just he's there from eight o'clock in the morning till if two o'clock at night. If you're listening to this over a loudspeaker in a bar and their mascot is Barnold, write to us on Reddit. Actually, what I want and you we will visit the bar. Most of you are probably commuting right now. What I would love for you to do, just to amuse yourself, because we're not even going to be there. But let us know in the Reddit or on Twitter or on Facebook. Uh, I want you right now. Uh, right after I finish the sentence, to just say out loud. It doesn't have to be very loud. Just say Barnold. Just Barnold. Say, if you're See, sitting, if you're sitting on the Q train, and you just you just you could even <laughs> you could even turn to the person and make sort of eye contact. Just turn to him and go Barnold. Let if us know your experience. Do it, on the it won't be much, but if three people start, it's a movement. There, it's, it's a, a movement. Barnold Bar- movement. Barnold Tuesdays. I saw that movie. Uh, Barnold push, it, push it forward. No. Uh, pay, pay, it forward. pay it forward. Yep. I didn't actually what see the movie. It? It's like pay it forward. It's with uh, oh. Haley Joel Osment and You help a and guy, Kevin and they'll help a guy, and they'll oh, help a I think you're tying into the story, like about a, a dying teacher. Or whatever you say it, was. it to if you say Barnold to one person and they say Barnold, it's a movement. I'm going off of what Steele said. Okay, he's building. This is a yes and podcast. <laughs> oh, I, I do the no butt podcast. <laughs> no butts on this podcast. We are fully clothed. Just dicks. <laughs> Just dicks. Three dicks in a room. Uh, All right. This has run its course, and it's time for a new topic. It's time topic. for a new topic. All right. Okay. So thank you, uh, Reinhold Boomer, for that topic of Roseanne and Tom Arnold. Here's and, our and, next and topic, And we will boys. get back into Tom Arnold when, uh, in our inevitable True Lies episode. Okay. This one is also from Reinhold Boomer. So really? That's, yeah. That's right. Right. Wait, wait. There's 16, There's 1,600 topics right now in there Jenny. There are. I think Reinhold Boomer may be our new Daniel in Seoul. <laughs> but really, you, you, it really doesn't. It's that is a it complete. It really is. Yeah. Is I'm it, sure, well, he could probably put them in at different times, and you know, that's got to be a statistical things. anomaly. That can't be. That can't, anyway, I, I think 1,600. He's, he's probably got a lot in there. Um, All right, thank you, Reinhold. I don't know that Again. you guys will be able to speak well about this, oh, okay. but I know this very well. All right, give it to me. The gay topic, porn. The topic is gay <laughs> pornography oh, starring me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, uh, it's When Bongos Collide, the Simpsons comics crossover. Yes. You know about I love this. Bongo comics, you know. So uh, Matt Groening mm-hmm. uh, got his start in Life and Hell as an alternative comics guy and, and then, then created The Simpsons, Simpsons and yeah. made many, many, many millions of dollars. Uh, that is well deserved. But in the mid '90s, he created his own comics imprint or his own his own publishing company called Bongo Comics, named after one of the characters from Life in Hell, and they do primarily Simpsons comics, now Futurama comics, so it's still all sorts of things. It's still around. Yeah, yeah. is it profitable? I would, I would s- imagine if it's still around. I would say it's probably not like making tons of money, but it's you know it's not. If it's you're right, if it's still around, if it's if still, still around, making, it's making money in the comic book industry, yeah. it'd be gone. Yeah. Um, when Bongos Collide was a crossover event, uh, probably in the first year that it was in business. 
So the first published comics that they did, they did four to start. It was Simpsons Comics, Radioactive Man mm-hmm. Comics, uh, Itchy and Scratchy in Comics, and Bartman. I loved Bartman. Bartman was yeah. solid comic. Real, uh, real quick, Radioactive Man, was it jokey or was it played straight? It was jokey. And okay, good. Radioactive Man was fucking terrific if you're a comics fan. Like, I read it when I was a Simpsons fan and just like, oh, I, I love Simpsons. I'll read this comic book that's a little Simpsons based. Take my money. And I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. But now reading it, it is. it was a six issue miniseries to start, and then they, they did more later. But it was pretty much a critique of the comic book industry. And each epi- each issue took place at a different era of oh, comics. Cool. So there was issue 1000, which was, uh, I think it was like, I forget what the actual title was called, but it was like a Spawn parody. Mm-hmm. And there was like this really long cape that kept getting in the way. <laughs> there was one that was like a Watchmen 80s, dark green. Right, as long as it wasn't comic- played straight, because that seems like it would yeah. be redundant and useless. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. It's, it's, it's a very clever comic book mm-hmm. um he was not part of the crossover it was a crossover between itchy and scratchy comics bartman and the simpsons comic okay what happened was i don't remember what caused it there was some explosion or radioactive yeah yeah like some that, kind yeah. of radioactive explosion and everyone in springfield became a superhero yep so homer wow, that's awesome. the incredible bulk homer became the incre- i'm so glad that you know what mm-hmm. the fuck we're talking about here steel when are you gonna learn he that steel the literally bulk? knows everything <laughs> <does>. culture ever <laughs> Yeah, uh, he, he was the incredible beard. <laughs> Bart was obviously Bartman. Yeah. Lisa turned into Jazzler and That's was right. like a Dazzler parody, but with right. her her saxophone. That's very dated. <laughs> it's very dated. Um, I remember Miss Krabappel turned into Vampiredna. Yes. Like instead of Vampirella, she was Vampiredna, and she had the you know the really thin. Uh, Smithers Red was thing. a Thor knockoff. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're we're on Simpsons Wiki right now, looking at when bongos collide. Uh, the Itchy and Scratchy one was just... Uh, what were their comics like? I, it was just like an episode. It so was, they, but in comic it was book very, form. very limited dialogue, very yeah. kind of... They short-lived. Were they, that one didn't last were they very long. sold on their own, or was it like the last three pages of a Bartman no, comic? No, it was sold on its own, which was kind of odd. Also, they, but they did have a couple like one-off like page things. It was like Spy versus Spy, yeah, yeah, if exactly. I remember correctly. If I remember right, the issue that Itchy and Scratchy tied in... like. It was really nothing, and then they just jumped into the Simpsons world yeah. at the end of the issue, yeah. and that was like how it. Well, tied they drop in. a bomb, that, and you know Bartman is about to f- fix it, and they, uh, yes. and they drop the the radioactive bomb. Yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. That. Yeah, there it is. It's all coming yeah. together. Mm-hmm. The jokester played by Krusty. Yes. <laughs> That was a good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Mudslinger was Mayor Quimby, what come, uh, a parody of Clayface from Batman Comics. So they made Mayor Quimby Clayface strictly for the uh, the pun of the, the Mudslinger. Oh, the Mudslinger. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, it was awesome, and I think actually they may have made some action figures they out did. of some of these like Simpsonized yep. um, heroes. The indigestible bulk. That was him. It was. Mm, I'm surprised there's, there's only five listed on the Simpsons wiki. There were a lot more. Like I forget what Flanders was. Um, he was definitely something that, like yeah. Multiple Man or something. Um, it was awesome. Like mm-hmm. I really liked the Simpsons comics when I was a kid. I still have the When Bongos Collide trade paperback. I have the uh, I, I have the Bartman trade paperback yeah, somewhere. It's, it it has know? that in it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It has the, the last issue. Apu, yeah, there are the action Apu figures. Apu seems to be Black Lightning. Apu, I think, was like the Flash. Oh. I can't even remember. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, See, this is—I haven't read this in he, forever. He, he yeah. had an action figure. I remember when Homer turns into the bulk. He says, "The hung- angrier bulk gets, the hungrier bulk gets." Yep. Bulk Nash. Yep. Mm, Here, look, click, click, click this. What is it? Captain Quick. That's who he was. He was a Flash oh, parody. Quickie Mart. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, it looks more like Quicksilver. It's, actually, the costume. So it's interesting. Instead of going by their personalities, they seem to just go for uh, for puns. They went for puns. Yeah. This was not, you know, 1984, uh, you know, Animal Farm, like, beep. Right, right, right. Yeah, this was, I mean, don't get me wrong, I loved I loved all this stuff. Yeah, this was fun stuff, and um, it is not available in Comixology. No Bongo comics are available What there. was Bartman like? Was that just like Radioactive Man? Bartman was, I, um, I, I remember, there, I only remember three issues of Bartman. There where was did, where the first did Bartman two? come from originally? Uh, the show. Yeah. Just the from episode. that Comic-Con where he puts yeah. on... That, yep. That's where the entire... Ca- I thought that's, that was referencing the out-of-canon character, Bartman. No, no, no. That was the origin of Bartman. Yeah. And then that became a thing in the Never video game. Full price. <laughs> <laughs> Then that became the thing in the video. Oh, man, I forgot the bullies were like the wild cats yeah. from That's Image right. Comics. That's Jim, amazing. Jimbo looks like Zoidberg there. Yeah. That's so great. Jimbo, Jimbo is a grifter there. Yeah. Wow. 
That's fucking awesome. I, I, I'm surprised. I always thought the Bartman joke was a Bartman reference. I didn't realize that was the origin of Bartman. Yeah. Um, so it was like a Batman parody? I or? want to read this the second I get home. Yeah. Because I have this on my shelf at home. Um, he's, he plays pretty much Bart Simpson, who oh just happens God. to have a cape and a, and a mask. So is he canon Bart Simpson? Does he live at uh, yes. 742? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's just it's him, but, it was, but he dresses up as Bartman. When he has to investigate crimes, he would turn into Bartman. Yeah. I remember specifically there was one where there was like a hypno coin that could hypnotize people. Yeah. And I think Skinner had been using it, and he was like the, the Puma or something, because the Springfield mascot is the Puma. Yeah. Um, so here's why I ask. Yeah. So you said this was a crossover between three main comics. I have to point out real quick, because yes. it's on the screen, Grandpa Simpson and all of his friends at the retirement castle were old blood, yeah. as opposed to young <laughs> blood. <laughs> Fucking amazing, and yeah. talking about 90s. That's there great. There you go, but continue. So, uh, you said that these were a crossover between three of the comics. Yeah. Uh, Simpsons, uh, Itchy and Scratchy, and Bartman? Yeah. Not yeah. Radioactive Man. Now that I'm actually... Well, Radioactive actually, Man was in. Radioactive yes. Man was in it, because I think what they happened up. was... Somehow Itchy and Scratchy came into the real world, and that unleashed like powers on everybody. So Bart was able to pull Radioactive Man out of a comic so that he could help stop what was going on. So it's a crossover between the four. So it was a crossover yeah. with everything. So the so the Bartman from the Bartman comics yeah. join this universe. What happens to the Bart from the Simpsons universe? The, it was Bart. This is, you know, this is like Bart of many worlds. You know, it's kind of like. <laughs> so is Bartman and the Simpsons comics. Uh, yeah, in the it, was, same it, universe? it was. Yeah, I think so. Okay, it was the same. It True was the same trans part. media, right there. <laughs> Absolutely, you know? there you go. <laughs> yeah, uh, they this was made, awesome. This they was really made cool. This an NES. If you're gonna make an NES game, don't waste it on a Bartman. Why? Why not make it this? This could have been a great 8-bit, 16-bit game. I would have liked a Bartman, you know, NES game if it was done right. In fact, he appears in Bart versus the World. Yeah, uh, and there I, was yeah. a Bartman game. Was there? A I think Bartman for game? NES. Oh. It was. It was. Yeah, th- that's what I've been referencing for the last. Oh, well, no, well, because you had Bart versus the Space, mu- space Mutants. Yeah. yeah, that was the first one. I had that one. Then there was Bart versus the World. That was I had the that first one too. video game I ever got as a Christmas gift, and my nice. parents. Like they had, they sat me down and they were like, "This is not a usual thing. You're not going to get a, a video game for Christmas. Christmas gifts are for things that you need, you know, things like like that." And then, of course, like the next year, my brother gets like two video games for Christmas. <laughs> I just remember the Great Wall of China level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We were skateboarding down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bartman meets Radioactive Man. That was the game. It was a Nintendo game. Oh, there you go. So, um, but this seems like it would have been a great video game. That this bongos collide. Yeah. Well, it looks like the uh, this video game pulled a lot from the comic book series Radioactive Man because you know they had Doctor Crab was like yeah, the villain in, yeah. in there, and this is exactly what he looked like. This is the art style from the the comics. Was Fallout Boy um, part of the comics, or did it take the episode, the Radioactive Man movie episode? No, Fallout for- Boy was part of the comics. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I was well, actually Fallout Fall- Boy was part was of already the, in the yeah, Simpsons. Yeah. Was established character in the Radioactive Man canon. Was that in Three Men in the Comic Book? I think so. Okay. God, yeah, and episode. Larva Girl. Yeah. Yeah, remember, they make the reference to the one where he marries Larva Girl. They eventually published right, that right, comic. Right, right, right. Yeah. I think all the ones they reference on the show eventually were actually made so into real comics. So are most of the things I know about from the show, they started in the show first. Yes. yes. Yeah, they yeah, weren't yeah. brought in. No, there was all yeah. like early 90s references, you know, things like that. And then I think Bongo Comics, 94 maybe, 93? It was, it was after... It, it was on the tail end of like the really the huge heights of The Simpsons. Yeah, but still, like, in terms of like the merchandising and everything, you know. So this is off yeah. topic, sort of. Um, but you- actually, somebody just maybe even at Simpsons trivia, somebody was asking me about Simpsons comics. Uh, they seem to be under the impression that I am uh, some kind of Simpsons expert. Okay, uh, and, I, uh, I used to be a huge Simpsons comics collector, and. Um, they so were, I can answer this question. Well, they were saying oh, the comics weren't very good, right? And I was like, I thought I was uh, I was under the impression that the Simpsons comics were actually very good. They were good. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I read them back in the day, like when they were first coming out, probably like the first 50 issues yeah. I used to have. Um, they were really good. It was if you like the show and you're a kid and you want comic books, it was perfect. It was it was great. Like, look, it, it wasn't, you know, the gigantic social satire that the Simpsons was. So at it that wasn't point. comic book a level humor that uh, of the way the Simpsons, like as good as Simpsons is as a sitcom, it wasn't as good as a right. comic. No, but it yeah. was still a really highly enjoyable comic. It was it was what a comic book should be. It was you know two bucks. You read it. It's fun. You put it in a bag and a board. Yeah. And then you know if you're like me, you go back and reread it to the point where you know you can't resell that. Or the all. paper disintegrates. Is, <laughs> it, uh, is that available on Comicsology or any of these digital no, none, platforms? No, none of the Bongo comics are now. They may have their own platform actually, mm-hmm. but they're Let's not do available a on Comicsology. For comics. They should. Mm-hmm. Um, the only comics that Bongo is currently publishing are Simpsons comics and Futurama comics. 
And there Futurama was a, must be very fun. That that just writes itself, huh? That I've only read like one or two issues of. I, I was at a con one time, a, a comic book convention. If you're not oh, in is the that know, what a con is? I, I thought, thought, thought it meant confidence man. I was a confidence man. <laughs> I was like, there's a hair in my soup. I'm not paying for it. <laughs> Meanwhile, the hair came from my own butt. Um, <laughs> it was. I was at a comic. Uh, I was at a comic book convention, and um, they had a, a, a Futurama comic that I could see, and it had the scary door on the cover. And it was like a scary <laughs> door-based episode. I love the Twilight Zone. Yeah. So I was like, I have to get These this. These are just examples. This yeah. be much better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it was good. And I read the – I also have the Simpsons Futurama crossover yeah. Crisis, yeah. which oh, we, talk, we talked yeah. about when we did our uh, Simpsonorama episode right, right, of right. Worst Episode Ever. Uh, and it's a solid comic. You know, It's exactly what you would it want it to be. It sounds like these comics are best when they're actually mimicking the medium itself. Yeah. I think so. I think there's a lot of love, a lot of loving fun poked at the comic book industry. And the people who are doing them, I'm guessing, are from the comic book industry and not being uh, yeah. transported from the Simpsons writer's yes. room. I mean, no, I don't I'm think sh- so. I'm yeah. sure there were probably a couple crossovers. Um, and it's, it is Matt Groening's company, so you know, I'm sure there was you know, a lot of that attitude to it. But it was just fun. You know? and, and, that, and you're right. They weren't aping the show. They were doing their kind of own thing. It's the way to do it. Work. Right. No, Absolutely. It, they, didn't, they didn't try to go nuts or try to do something that was, you know, like Alan Moore's Simpsons or something yeah, like that. Yeah, no, no, no. Watchmen babies. <laughs> no Watchmen babies. <laughs> what was fun with the uh, the original run of Simpsons comics, I don't know if they do this anymore, but you would have the main story, uh, mm-hmm. which, would be, which would be great, and then if you flipped the comic over, it would be a completely different book. Like on the back of the like, pages, like upside the back, down? The back cover upside down was a different cover. So they had Bus Man, which was a reference from the... Right, uh, right, right. They actually had the Bus Man comic. And it was like just a four-page just backup a one-timer. strip. Just a one-timer. <laughs> yeah, just a one-timer. And they did that every every month. That's every awesome. Month. That's it not confusing awesome. to read when you're reading left to right and you see all this upside-down shit? No, because you'd finish the main story and then there'd be the letters page. And then you'd turn and see upside-down and you'd be like, oh, I got to turn well, it well, it's, it's, it, Yeah, it wasn't it was, a full book. You know? All right. It was it just on the end, but upside-down. It was probably four pages at most and a cover on the back. That's fun. It was very fun. They're fun. They're fun they people. zombies in post-apocalyptic war zone. That's <laughs> <laughs> about a dude. <laughs> Bus man. Yeah, Bus check man. it out. I feel like that was Simpsons Comics number four. Mm, possibly. I don't know. Yeah, it's an impressive know. piece of trivia. I don't know. Is it? It's not very impressive mm. at all. You made a face as you were saying it, <laughs> which meant to say and to imply that it was not impressive at all. It was a all. waste of brains. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, so that was when Bacchus Collide. I don't know. It's available in trade paperback. It's worth checking out if you're a really hardcore Simpsons slash comic book fan, yeah. like I am. It's good. It's a lot of fun if you can find it. Yeah. Well, we've got about 15 minutes left. That's uh, about 25% of an hour if you're, uh, if you're uh, some kind of math nerd. Math genius. Uh, uh, should we do a third topic? No. no. I think what we should do is sit in silence for 15 minutes. I'm good okay. with that. All right. <laughs> you guys aren't sick, are you? <laughs> yeah. I'm a little sick. <laughs> no. I've been doing knock on wood, and I, it doesn't matter I'm knocking on wood. I'm definitely going to get sick now. But I've been doing so good for like the last two years. Yeah. You know, I've been doing... Uh, you know, I've been big onto vitamins for yeah. like the last year and a half. I've been yep. like just pumping up my immune system with uh, all these different things, turmeric and, and uh, magnesium. Uh, I also finally, my mom, I, I see my mom like once a year now, two, twice a year, and she was so excited the other day when I saw her. Uh, it was pouring rain, and I was meeting her at a restaurant, and she was so excited. She's like, you're finally carrying an umbrella. And I was, <laughs> and I, and I was just like, and it's, a, it's at some point around 30, I started carrying an umbrella, and when it's cold out, I put on extra layers. Like, yeah. I wasn't doing that for the first thirty You're years of my life. Finally, heeding her advice. So, yeah. like, I've just like I've just gotten too old for this shit. So, yeah, I dress warm when it's cold, uh, and you know, I'm a bit of a germaphobe, and I make sure I purell and I wash my hands after any. T- if, I, if I get off a subway, if I take the, the mass transit, yeah. I will not touch anything with my bare hands until yeah. like, like as soon as I get in the, uh, before I do anything else, I wash my hands. I, like I just, ugh, I just my hands feel gross. Anyway, I so, agree. So I've been like doing really well, and it works. I don't get sick. Are yeah, you, I, no, you got to wash your hands often. People yeah. don't do that, and yeah. it's gross. Look, it's a little bit of germs is a good thing. You want to keep bit? your, you yeah. know, but you know, you don't be like steel and eat French fries off the floor. <laughs> you know, particularly when they're not even your own. You yeah. know? There you go, and you're just on the train, and you're like, ooh, floor Man. floor, floor uh, fries. Yeah, I could never do like we used to like when we used to go to um, Perkins and IHOP, the yeah. pancake houses on Staten Island. Uh, remember, those people would just like leave a whole thing of fries on the table behind us, and I would just eat them. Like, yeah, I, that's I could, not I, something you I, should I, do. I, I couldn't do that anymore. But I wasn't yeah. carrying an umbrella either, so that's I've learned true. a lot. So what would you do if it was raining? You would just walk out and just be rained on? Uh, and just be like, oh, my fuck philosophy it. was, who cares? I'm just wet. Ugh, whatever. Kind of I'm not cool. the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah, whatever. You're not. I'm not. <laughs> what about I'm the Wicked Witch of the East. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <Poppies>. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's a flying monkey. <laughs> uh, I, thought, I thought that was Goldar. <laughs> uh, I'm Goldar, <laughs> Jason the Red Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> I need my wings. Where's my Red Bull? <laughs> I don't think that was a too bad Goldar impression. That wasn't terrible. <laughs> All right, we now now that we've eaten up some time, now we only back have about, to the moment of silence. Yeah. Now, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, by the way, this is a great time if somebody else has sat down next to you on the train to just turn to them. Just turn to them and, and say, say, "What's up?" No, say Barnold. Oh yeah, say Barnold again. <laughs> just Barnold. just say Barnold. Just tap somebody. Tap politely. Tap them on the shoulder and just go. Yeah. Arnold. Don't give him any context. Actually, give them context and, and say, hey, you should listen to this podcast, <laughs> wepodcast.com. But besides that, no context. Just say Barnold. Or just get up and go, hey, Barnold. <laughs> just hey, like scream it. Hey, Barnold. Oh, I, I love that show. Speaking of 90s. Yeah. They hey, Arnold. Was hey, Arnold. Speaking of reboots, isn't that coming back? Aren't they bringing that back for a limited I believe they are doing a, yeah, I think something like that. And I think they're bringing Rocco's Modern Life back, too. Now it's Rocco's Postmodern Life. Rocco's Modern Death. He's old now. Mine was better. God, I love Rocco. I love both of those shows. Hey Arnold was actually, even as a kid, I was like, this isn't the normal kind of TV show. Hey Arnold was a solid show. People love Hey Arnold. Even now. I love Hey Arnold. It's not like laugh out loud hilarious, but it is a lot of, we talk about, you know, the Simpsons needing more pathos. We talk about yeah. you know, shows needing arcs. And it, it's a really fun kind of, you know, surreal slice of, slice of there life. There was something kind of authentic to it. Yes. That yeah, that's was, authentic. That was that's surprising, yeah. yeah. And the music was fantastic. I still yeah. listen to the jazz soundtrack from that show. It's great. Uh, <laughs> and hey, Dan Castellano was the release, voice of the is, uncle. Can you get the soundtrack? Do they release you can, it? Uh, it's, it? They was released. It's now... Nebulously semi legal on certain oh. websites. So you can't just go and get uh, the Hey Arnold on vinyl? I don't think so. Mm. No, I think, well, Flang- Flamingonosis, is that the name of the band? They oh did- my God, he's got Flamingonosis. We have to operate immediately. <laughs> I knew I should have used more Purell in the, 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 our train. He ate fries from the train. <laughs> <laughs> turning a turning a- pink. What's going on? <laughs> he's standing on one leg in a pond. <laughs> but I think they did the theme and I think they did a few other songs, and you can find those available legally on YouTube. Okay, and it's you know well, cool. some, good, some good stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, I like Hey Arnold. Do we want to talk about Hey Arnold? Or Let's we talk about going hey to the Jenny. Uh, I, I'm good with another minute of silence. Oh, okay. <sighs> this beer was very day- tasty, uh, by the <laughs> way. Nice, nice day out today. Yeah, it is. That's actually today. miserable. Alex. I know, but the you. listeners don't know what day we recorded this <laughs> on or what it was like in our why, area. Why lie to them? We just talked about how great uh, Jack, Hey Arnold. I lie how, to them all we, the we time. We were so happy that Hey Arnold was such an authentic show, and now we're literally lying to them about superficial <laughs> things we, like the weather. We only lie to the listeners. I never read when bongos collide. Should I don't we, even know what that is. I we, made all that shit up. My name's not even Jack. Yeah. I say it at the top of every show. My name's Jack. It's not. Yeah. I'm, I'm by myself right now, and I'm just doing funny voices for Steel and You're Jack. You're doing funny voices. I'm a figment of your imagination. And I can talk in, as all of us at the same time. <laughs> It's amazing. It's very impressive. Also, you do Finny voices, which I, I do assume Finny, are Albert Finney I'm impressions. I'm from Finland. Oh, I'm Albert Finney from Finland. <laughs> no, no, that's Sweden. That's Sweden. You're messing up the Finnish it's, accent. It's Finland. What do you know about Finland? <laughs> actually, you know what? I've never actually heard a Finnish accent. There it, you I, go. You know. Now you have. I wish this accent would finish. <laughs> oh. Hey, oh. I'll do 10 more minutes Our then. Our listeners are like, oh, I liked it better when they weren't talking. All right. <laughs> No, let's go to the J. Come on, let's do it. One, one more. We've got nine minutes we left. we got time for one more. All right, I've got it right here. It is okay. from Pat M. So thank you so thank much. You, Pat. Thank you, Pat. Patty M. Is that short for Patrick? Is it short for Patricia? We'll never know. I think it's short for Patrick. I think I know who this is, but <laughs> this is the topic. It is the slightly rapey villain in Hunchback of Notre Dame. Slightly rapey. I've never seen the Hunchback I've never of seen Notre it Dame. either. It I is... am a grown man. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's on Hulu, and I've yes. kind of been wanting to watch it because it's one of those blind Disney blind spots for me. Yeah. But the animation Steel, you've is seen Superb. Clearly. It is. It is one of the best That's traditionally like hand. Three D animated too, right? There, 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 there are portions some, of it. Yeah, it's right, a right. lot like like a Futurama type thing. Where yeah, there's some three yes. D. This was the t- on the tail end of their their golden age of hand drawn. Right, it was right after well, Pocahontas. It was right it was, it was, yeah, it was between 90, Pocahontas and Mulan, I think. Uh, Pocahontas 90s. and Hercules. It oh, was, okay. Um, and, and I actually I used to hate Hercules when I was a kid. 
Hercules. then I rewatched it, and it's actually kind of funny. Like you know, it's, 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 it's you know, yeah, it's okay. It's it's look, I, I consider it on par with like a Peabody and Sherman like modern kind of three D <laughs> sure. kind of thing. Like not yeah. great, but I enjoyed okay. it. I think it's fun. That's that's fair. I but would agree I, with you. But at that point, I mean, also after this, we had Tarzan, which I think was a decent Disney film. Atlantis. We had Atlantis, Emperor's New Groove. We yeah, I didn't had, see any of these. Uh, Lilo and Stitch. I didn't see any know. of these. Oh, they're all, they're see, all but the, good. those always felt more modern to yes. me. Whereas, so I consider the if you're starting at Little Mermaid for like the Disney Renaissance, uh, and then you get Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Lion King. Yeah. I stopped at Lion King, so I didn't see anything after that. I saw Pocahontas at some point Wh- years later. When I was a kid, I stopped at Lion King. Yeah. Also, yeah. Like, um, I hadn't. I, well, I still haven't seen Pocahontas. But I would say maybe Mulan. I would count as the la- or I guess Hercules. Mulan's um, a good movie. I've seen that but as like an adult. The, the, the ones you just said, uh, even Atlantis and uh, Emperor Treasure Ruth, Planet. To me, those were like. I love Treasure Planet. To me, those <laughs> weren't. That, that was like next generation. No, I can get yeah, that. I, I mean, agree with you. When 90, 93, 94 is when Lion King came out. Like, that's when we're 10. That's when we're getting to churn. The next movie is Pocahontas, which, as boys, we had zero interest I, I, actually, in. Actually, yeah. I, can, I can describe it perfectly. So, my best friend, uh, his name was Tom. Uh, so, for my fifth grade, sixth grade, I think sixth grade. It was either sixth or eighth grade. I'm pretty sure it was sixth grade. Uh, birthday party. My mom said she would take me and like four or five friends to the movies, mm-hmm. and I wanted to see uh, uh, Congo. Congo or Con Air? Con- uh, Congo. I Congo was, was probably Con Air was R. You know, I'm not Con- sure. You're, Congo you know. and Pocahontas well, Con- were contemporary. So one was sixth grade. One was eighth grade. I think Con Air came later. So that was yeah. eighth grade. So yeah. I wanted. We're gonna go see Congo. I was a big Crichton head. I, I read a lot of yep. Crichton at the yep. age. Yep. Yep. Same. Uh, and I was like, can, can we go? Jungle. Yeah. So I was like, can we go see Congo? <laughs> and my mom's like, sure. And uh, all my friends were on board. Uh, and uh, my friend Tom, uh, his mother, who was close to my mother, uh, raised some concerns because it was it was either R or PG-13, and she didn't want him to see it. Mm-hmm. And my mom goes, that's fine. If if you don't want him to see it. We'll all just go see Pocahontas. Oh no! And I raise now. Dan knows I'm usually very pleasant to my mother. <laughs> I, uh, Apparently, <laughs> you don't heed her advice with regard to uh, outer garments I'm and or umbrellas. I'm not going to say anything, but I did make a face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was always very nice and cordial to my mother as a as a preteen boy, and never never had an attitude, mm-hmm. uh, and I never uh, I never gave her any lip. Um, What's going on outside right now? I never said uh, you could shove this fucking umbrella up your fucking fat ass. I never said that Um, once to her. Yeah, you may have said something (laughs) close to that, but but anyway, I flipped the fuck out. I was like, I don't care if he's my. I I don't care if I never talk to him again. We are not going to see Pocahontas. We are seeing Congo. Yeah, the gorilla is has voice. Activated like sign sign language language. and Tim Curry's. Yeah, and Tim Curry's big deal for a kid. We are not. We are mom and Bruce Campbell. yeah. And Bruce Campbell, you're yeah. right. So if that doesn't hammer home, and then out of spite, I didn't watch the movie for 15 years. So if that so doesn't hammer home how like I was done with Disney after so uh, wait Lion a King, you didn't see Pocahontas. You got your way and saw Congo. Oh yeah. 100%. What did Tom do? Did he go? Did he I see think Congo? He, I think he came. I don't remember. I feel like I could see him being alone in a theater just watching Pocahontas. <laughs> man, like I wonder if Congo is any better than this. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure he came. Have you ever seen the wolf cry? <laughs> to the blue cor- so it's so a damn catchy song. So that's that's the thing about the Hunchback. Those that that movie in Pocahontas, the music. Music is actually really good in yeah. that. So what's the song it's, from Hunchback? What's the Hunchback, famous song? Is Hunchback a musical? It is a musical. It is. Okay. So they have that. several. It, they, they're not really like all that toe tapping, but that opening uh, song they have, it's like it's gypsy music and it, right. like, it gives the background and it's, you know, all about who's the monster and who is the man comparing him to the rapey villain from sure. that, who, if he doesn't get Esmeralda, you know, she'll burn in hell for all eternity. Oh, boy. And, yeah. So the problem with the hunch and I like the movie, you know, as a piece of art, but as a story, I think it falls apart because it's it's too much of one and not enough of the other. It's, uh-huh. it's too Disney cutesy to really pull off. Yeah. And it's not adult enough to really, you know, hammer it home. I mean, you it's, know? it's tough. They took so many, like, fairy tales and things. Right. And this is like a novel from Victor Hugo, yeah. The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Like, it's not, huh, it doesn't, yeah, I never thought about it that. It doesn't really lend itself to Disney fiction. Well, right. neither did Pocahontas, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's that's more like American legend, I guess. Yeah, and they definitely legend, legended up the asshole for yeah. that one. You know, but I expected that for Pocahontas, because that's what they did with Aladdin, that's what they did for Beauty right. and the Beast. And by the way, Beauty and the Beast was a novel as well from the late 1800s that was written by a French author. It's not really? a traditional fairy tale. I did not know it, that. There were, there were elements that are taken out, but yeah. the major story comes from a uh, a public domain work. Oh, also, I, did, I didn't know that. The, uh, the 1995 Disney uh, animated feature of that year, Tropic of Capricorn, that was also an adult <laughs> novel. It was, uh, it was not, not a... Uh, yeah, not no, a kid, was, not, a, was, not was, a Hans Christian Andersen. Speaking <laughs> of Tropic of Capricorn, which makes me think of Seinfeld, <laughs> the only thing I know about uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame is that uh, George Costanza himself 
Jerry, Jason yes. Alexander yes. was one of the He's gargoyles. Victor right? or Hugo? Oh. They're the you know which is oh, nice. reference. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen the movie, but oh, all I, I remember. I thought the gargoyles were in Hercules. No, I never seen Hercules. I thought that was Hercules where. Ja- a good movie. I thought Jason it's Alexander okay. was in that. Uh, no, that's, that's um, Danny Bobcat Goldthwait and um, who's oh, the and guy? Matt, Matt Frewer. Yeah. Do yeah. they play gargoyles? They play they, they play demons. Pain and Panic. Yeah. Two demons that work for Hades. Huh. I was literally about to say when you guys were talking about Hercules, it's like it had James Woods and Jason Alexander. How bad could it be? But I guess it didn't. No. Yeah. Jason Alexander was in Hunchback Notre Dame, and all. All I remember from the commercials when I was a kid is when he would just go pour the wine and cut the cheese. Yeah, you guys I do remember, remember that, that like, commercial. I remember, yeah. That's like drill her in, my brain. then give her some slack, and reel her in, then give her some slack. Yeah, Stop yeah, it! Yeah. She's a so, woman, not a mackerel. <laughs> were they a direct uh, response to the fact that Timon and Pumbaa were so popular? Kind of. It was also, I mean, once again to play it up, they never quite address in the film whether they're figments of his imagination oh. or whether they're real. So oh, you can watch it, and you, it, he, it is his own mind arguing with him it's about like Mr. what Robot. Right to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, really? You know, or it could be like a Disney fun, like, oh, these are talking gargoyles, and isn't everything fun? You know? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we're running out of time. We only have about two minutes left. Uh, tell us about this rapey villain. Or so, slightly rapey. Uh, so this was, I can't remember the character's name. Um, Bill Cosby. <laughs> no, it's... <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Tony J does the voice, and I love Tony J. Oh, he's, he's got great, that yeah. really deep voice, and he has a solo <laughs> in which he sings about sending this gypsy woman to hell oh, if she doesn't sleep with him. Oh, he's, it's great. He, he's just got that. I whole, know mostly for mystery men. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, solid voice, Steel. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, uh, but he, he, he's part of that opening song too, where you know he talks about how he's going to raise this hunchback as his own, and somehow it'll all come back and help him out in the end, which it does in the film. <laughs> and they, you know, he burns down the gypsy encampment oh, and guns, Judge you know. Claude Frollo is yes, that his name? there we go yes okay, indeed yeah, there you go and our mutual friend John Fink it's one of his favorite films oh, and, I didn't know that. Uh, and they, they tried to turn it into a musical on Broadway and I think I, th- I think it didn't work out and for the same reason was it recently because yeah, they're really like, going at it now yeah. did it even open I don't even know I don't, I don't know they, they were trying played. to work it out yeah. but it, it, maybe it did and I, it just came and went maybe they were just kind of doing previews but they were pushing for it hard and you know, and there are some really good songs. Well, you know, maybe I'll play some for you after this. It shows like the animation is spectacular, but it just the story itself just it, it's it's a little too a little too floppy. Like it's yeah. sometimes it's serious, sometimes it's goofy, sometimes it's serious, sometimes it's so goofy. Pocahontas, as much as I don't really care for it, it was considered a generally very good animated movie. Was this the was this like the jump the shark moment for the classic hand drawn nineties uh, Disney let's, animation? Let's see what Wikipedia says for the reception. Critical reception, seventy three percent positive on Rotten Tomatoes. That's not bad. That's not Roger bad. Ebert liked it. You know, the, it was it was well received. It was the problem. It was coming off of Aladdin and The Lion King, which had made just like gargantuan amounts yeah, of yeah. money. Particularly yeah. Lion King, which was expected to be a middling success, and right, it came right. out and it was the top grossing film of that era. I, and you know, Pocahontas made half as much, and so it did well. Right. But they expected it to be like the next Beauty and the Beast, which was nominated for Best Picture. Yeah, and yeah, it yeah. did okay. And Hunchback came out and did okay. Like it did fine what's, for the time. What's funny is around the time the Pocahontas came out is the time that Toy Story came out and Pixar right. kind of picked up oh, the torch. Yeah, yeah that's so true. I yeah. think that's probably what happened with uh, traditional animation for Disney. Yeah. And guys, let's have a moment of silence because we are out of time. <laughs> are we still having the moment of silence? Oh, yeah. I get, oh, no, sorry. Yeah. No, cool. <laughs> time is up. All I right. Mean, so I that's... Mean, that's, that's it. That's what happens when you ask for a moment of silence. I'm not going to start talking. I mean, right. I thought I would ask for a moment of silence. You guys would be dicks and be like, la, 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 we're not being quiet. Just because you are like that doesn't mean we have to be like that. Right, ask me for a moment of silence. All right, Dan. La, 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 I won't even let you ask for it. <laughs> Dan, can we have a... La, la. <laughs> moment of silence. <laughs> that didn't make any um, sense. So... All it's right, that, so that, it's that, that time. It's that time. So here's what we're going to do. The episode is ending. So, Steele, I'm going to turn to you. Mm-hmm. Now the time is up, and I'm going to ask you, what have you learned here today? I know I learned a lot about uh, like kind of like the early 90s TV. We had a great discussion about Roseanne and where Tom Arnold came from. I'd yeah. forgotten. He was, well, it's a lot of things that like I had known when I was much, much younger, you know, back before alcohol had soaked my <laughs> mind. Burned away it, the Tom Arnold parts of <laughs> your right, brain. Right. And then it was like, right, yeah. And then there was the one bongos collide. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, yeah. you know, Old blood, say yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know that's the exact feeling. I hope many of our listeners are get, getting from this. I have a feeling most of them aren't getting that, and they're more in my camp. Where they're just like, I don't know what they're talking about, but sure. But it's mildly <laughs> interesting, so I will continue listening. <laughs> uh, Dan, what have you learned? 
Uh, I learned that Hunchback of Notre Dame was a musical, which I didn't really know. I mean, I know Disney was definitely cranking out a lot of animated musicals at the time, but I always thought that one was not uh, a music. Huh. But, so I learned it. Uh, I learned that uh, a very good friend of mine, a good friend of Steele's, John Fink, uh, who has recently started listening to the show, I believe. Uh, so if you're listening, hey, John. What up, Johnny uh, F? I didn't realize he was I'm such a big fan. I'm the one person who doesn't know you. Didn't realize he was such a big fan of uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame. One of the um, first things we bonded over when we met. Hey. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, and one other thing I learned is you can draw a line in the sand between who are true Wii Studios fans, who really, really care, yeah. and who don't, based on who actually in the last hour turned to somebody next to them and said, and said Barnold. Barnold. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Did we ever figure out what was the deal with the slightly rapey villain? Uh, just that he, you know, he's a complex, you know, villain. He's complex. There and you go. so he's, but he, he has severe repression. And so he takes it out in the world because, you know, he's trying to do supposedly God's work, but really he's just kind of answering to himself. And then at the end, uh, right. a gargoyle comes to life, scares him, and he falls into a pit of fire, just awesome. like he promised. You know, I kind of want to see that. So next time I come on a little too strong with the ladies at the bar after having a couple beers, and I'm a little little too pushy, just remember, you know, I'm on a mission from God, and eventually I'm going to fall into a pit of fire anyway. What are you, a blues brother? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't understand the reference. I'm on a mission from God. That was a lie from, from Blues God. Brothers. I've, I've never seen it, but it's I've also... I've also never wait, seen it. But, <laughs> what? You've but, never seen Blues Brothers? But it's John Fink's favorite movie, so... I've never <laughs> seen it either, actually. What? Hey, John. But we're out of time. There's no time for Steel to gasp and yell at us for not seeing this movie. Um, but uh, that's going to do it for this episode of 90s Percentile. If you want to support the show, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You go to patreon.com slash we studios and kick in some money for us. Uh, or you can go to our website, which is wepodcast.com or 90spercentile.com and click our Amazon links. Shop like you normally would. That helps keep the show free. You don't want to spend any money. You still want to support us. You can go to iTunes and leave us a five-star review. That helps us out a ton. A ton of help is had by those. Uh, and if you do that, you might get your review read on the air. Except we don't have any, so Steel has nothing to read. So Steel, I would like you to review... This episode of the podcast. This was a five star, you know, episode of the podcast. Check, we did it again. I just like you know, <laughs> just the romance, the drama, the laughs. You know, I was happy. I was laughing. I was crying. It, it backed and forth, and I just came out of it just like wanting to do, you know, wanting to listen to this yet again. You know, all right. And I'm so, I'm really sorry I made you cry before. That was uh, I, I will cut it out of the episode. I appreciate I, uh, that. that you know, I really shouldn't have said those things about you and your family. It, was you know, uncalled it, it, for. It cuts to the bone, but you know, I've I've learned to grow. <laughs> He's a big boy. He can yeah. he can handle it. And uh, you might find a live poisonous snake in your. Head. There you go. That's how he'll handle it. Um, um, terrific. So, Steel, uh, what do you have to plug? Where can people find you on the internet? What what, what do you got? Please find me at steelphilipek.com or at Words of Steel on Twitter. Uh, also, radioroomshow.com. You can find at Real Radio Room on Twitter. And we're going to be having a lot of more episodes coming in July. So listen to the final bits of uh, season one of Radio Room, and then we're going to be gearing up for season two. Very Hopefully cool. to be released in the fall, although depending on schedules, that might be spring or early winter of 2018. Oh, yeah. You're a busy guy. And it if happens. You, if you somehow didn't check it out last time uh, Adam and Steele were on, give it a go. Uh, you must be very tired. Your facial muscles re- must hurt from laughing at our show so Absolutely. hard. You need a little drama in your life, uh, but you don't want to watch anything. You want to just keep doing the audio thing. Radio Room is for you. Really, check it out. And after you check it out, turn to the person next to you and, and recommend it and then say Barnold. And say Barnold. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hashtag Barnold. I'm at Jackie Nobre on Twitter and Instagram. I am at then Dan says. Uh, and the podcast, of course, is at 90s Percentile or at Wii Studios Pod for everything that we're doing over here at Wii Studios. Uh, and uh, from our website, WePodcast.com, you can get to our Reddit, our Facebook page, our, all of our social media, uh, all that fun Support stuff. Support us on our Patreon. newsletter, our Let Patreon, us know all in the, that fun you stuff. Know, if you see some 90s BuzzFeed articles or whatever, just uh, spread the word. Just actually don't turn to the person and say, Marnold, save WePodcast.com. That's actually much more helpful. <laughs> much, much more helpful because uh, we don't have the, uh, the SEO for Barnold yet. <laughs> we can try. To, we could try. We yeah. could try. We could try. Uh, thank you so much, Steel. Absolutely. Thank, thank you so you much, so Steel. Uh, and that's going to do it for this episode. My name is Dan. My name is Jack, and we'll see you. Moment of silence. <laughs> In another decade.